the vSphere client, and you will notice that I'm going to select a NetApp tab here, and this initializes our virtual storage console. And as you can see here, it's got a number of tasks here. It can monitor and manage ESX4, uh, ESXi4 hosts, and it can report on 3.5 hosts. This will eventually be NetApp's framework for all of our plugins within the VMware realm. As you can see here, we've got a sub left-hand network navigation component that allows us to expand and eventually allow us to have horizontal scrolling of our tools. Uh, so this is basically the framework. So what I want to show you here is it allows you to show you, it will auto-identify your NetApp storage controllers, and if there are ESX hosts already connected to them, it's pretty easy for the build app to actually identify which ESX hosts are connected. So again, I've got a, a rather simplistic setup here for our, our, our demonstration. Um, what you can see here on the NetApp controller, it's actually letting the VMware admin know that there's something wrong with the storage controller. So it's flagged an alert um, that the <coughs> VMware admin can actually open file um, it's given you know, permissions uh, to do so. And you can actually see, as you see here, one of our volumes is, is full. And so he's actually being notified of storage level issues. For those of you that are in the training class, here's file view again. <laughs> Let's go walk through it. Um, you'll notice the little icon up here is about two generations old. At the same level down here under our ESX hosts, if there is a, this, this subsection here it ensures that the connectivity settings, be it fiber channel, iSCSI, NFS, um, are set to optimal values. And if these weren't optimal, they would report with an exclamation point or, you know, in a red diamond. And what it allows a, a VMware admin to do is actually select uh, a host or a number of hosts and let the system autocorrect them while the system's up and actually serving data to running virtual machines. So um, again, what we're trying to do is automate the simplicity of, of storage connectivity at the physical hypervisor level. There's a couple of other tools here that help uh, a number of admins. One is reporting detail on, on LUNs, if this had a number of uh, fiber channel or identity LUNs, but list them here. It allows us to report on storage virtualization technologies and savings, such as what's the data store usage, what's the LUN usage, what's the volume usage, and then at the physical construct, well, how full is the actual aggregate itself? We do that same type of reporting for, for NAS. Uh, NAS has one less layer, but we report on what's in the data store and what's in the volume and then what's at the physical aggregate itself as well. We also have some data collection tools in case you ever have a connectivity-related case. We can actually register uh, a storage controller, um, put in our, our um, authentication for it, select um, our ESX host, our, our storage switches as well, and the system will actually go out and pull the support data logs that are required for a case bundle them together, and now you can upload those to, you know, VMware, NetApp, Cisco, you know, Brocade, whatever the support teams are that are involved in supporting you. And, and what we're hearing from customers with that is it, it's, it's, it's um, speeding up the time that it takes for them to get to recovery. A couple other tools left in here, and I'll, I'll cover them at a high level, is MBR Align, which is, ensures um, optimal partition layout or performance within the file system in the guest OS and the storage controller itself. This is a means to install that tool. It is a free tool from NetApp and it is a command line tool. Um, it, it, some customers like to use this. We have a number of other customers that use tools from PlateSpin or from Vision Core to accomplish this that have more uh, robust reporting and scheduling feature sets, but there is one native to NetApp. Uh, the second half of the screen is some tools that allow you to help automate the setting of the SCSI retry and timeout values inside of your guest OS by providing you an ISO image that you can mount in your templates and run a, run a script or a registry file and set your template for optimal resiliency in the event of a, of a storage network disruption. So um, that's at a high level um, of the VSC. And uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on here because we've got a number of other tasks to do and we're pushing up against the clock. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward unless somebody cries uncle, okay? So, in our, in our data center, you see I have two ESX hosts. They could be clustered together. They, um, they're not for this point, but they could be. They could be in resource pools. It doesn't matter. So to provision storage in VMware, you can simply at any layer here, whether it's a data center, as I'm doing here, or a cluster, a resource group, or a physical node, you 
can actually right-click and click NetApp, and you can say provision data stores. And this tool that I'm highlighting for you is actually called our Rapid Cloning Utility. Um, so I'm going to flip over to the plugin so that you can see it. It's pretty straightforward. You register your storage controllers. I've, I've done one here. Um, and your storage admin can actually, um, again, focusing on role-based access, your storage admin can actually configure what components of the storage controller, whether it's physical disk pools, uh, flexible volumes, network interfaces, he will allow the VMware admin to have management capabilities on. Then he can actually um, lock down this configuration setting so that the, the VMware folks can't get, get in there all the time and they're mucking anything up, and then allow you as the VMware admin to basically do your job in a, in a more accomplished manner. So, for example, for provisioning storage, I can go from this data center here. I can actually say NetApp, oops, provision storage, and then I've got my choice um, with my storage controller. Again, if I had a list, I would have a they'll select through the drop-down. I have my choice of, of NAS or SAN, right, NFS or VMFS. And it's actually letting you know here that um, the hosts we are on are, are Ethernet connected only. We don't have fiber channels. So we'll do a nice study run on VMFS. And actually, before I move on this, I should cancel here and show you that we don't even have iSCSI configured on these boxes. Right? It's my iSCSI software adapter. It's not even, not even running, and um, uh, my firewall is not even open for, um, for iSCSI. Okay. We will automate, automate taking care of this, these features for you, or these components on all your nodes in a in a either cluster, like I said, cluster, single node, resource pool, or um, data center. I'm going to do the data center here. So AI yeah, SCSI, I'm going to say I need a 10 gig one. I'm going to call this um, NF iSCSI, and I get to pick which, which volume I want it on. This volume has to be pre-provisioned from the storage admin for iSCSI. Uh, in other words, this has to be part of that area where the storage admin is signed um, what objects the VMware admin can, can use at his nature. We can enable thin provisioning um, if we choose to. A little warning here saying that thin provisioning oversubscribes your storage controller. Um, and we actually say apply. And what we'll see here is if I open my task window, that we're actually creating this iSCSI LUN, uh, enabling our initiators, configuring them, opening firewall ports. Uh, and then we're actually in the process of scanning our HBA, and we'll see our LUN here shortly. And this is where we watch watch water boil. So now it's going to refresh our storage system. If I go summary here, creating our VMFS data store, rescanning, and there's our iSCSI data store online. Okay, so pretty pretty simple, and and you know it's it's overly simple in this demonstration because I have two nodes, but it's very common for us to run the customers running four and six and eight node clusters, um, you know, those are nowhere near the upper limits of what's available with vSphere, but they are, you know, very common limits to, to, find, clust uh, to find customers deploying today. And so tools like this help automate what the storage admin can do. Um, the same process is available if we want to do um, NFS, and, and actually for the sake of time, to try to stay on time. I'm going I'm to skip that if that's okay, because there's something else I want to like to demonstrate, which is... Um, if I select the host here and I look at virtual machines, the rapid cloning utility um, not only allows me to provision storage, it allows me to provision virtual machines. And actually, I skipped a point here. I'm sorry. I'll pick this data store because I know it's a, um, a uh, uh, NFS data store. You can see here, if I literally select a data store, I can do 